Hello and welcome to Selenium Minutes. Today I will show you in a quick video how to set up a Selenium Java project in Eclipse IDE. The first thing you will need to do is to download the Eclipse IDE. To do this, all you have to do is go to eclipse.org slash downloads. After you get to this URL, you can choose which version of Eclipse to download. One of the most common versions to download is Eclipse Classic. You can also download Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers or Eclipse IDE for Java developers. You also will need to know what kind of system you have, whether it is a Windows 32-bit or Windows 64-bit. Once Eclipse is downloaded, it's going to be a zip folder and you will need to unzip it onto your C drive. It will have all of the following things inside. What we ultimately want to locate is the Eclipse Start button, Eclipse EXE Application button, and to start Eclipse, all you have to do is double-click the icon. The first thing you will have to do once you open Eclipse is create a workspace. A workspace is going to be a folder in which you will store all of your projects, including your Selenium project. It will also be a folder where all of your Eclipse settings are being stored. To create a workspace, all you have to do is say File, Switch Workspace, Other. And you will see the following dialog, Workspace Launcher. Simply type in the name of your workspace and click OK. Your Eclipse application will shut down, but once it restarts, you will have a brand new workspace to start your automation project in. Once you created your workspace, you can close the Welcome tab. Now that we have our workspace set up, we will create our project. For this tutorial, we will be using Java. To set up Java project in Eclipse, we will choose File, New. Now, for most of us, Java project is going to be an option right at the top of the list. However, if that option is not available to you, please scroll to the bottom of the list and select Other. Here, you are able to search for the correct project wizard. So all you have to do is type in Java and you will be able to easily locate the Java project icon. Click Java project, click next, and on the next screen, choose a project name. In this case, we will use orange HRM as our project name since our test application is called orange HRM. You also have multiple options. One of them is use default location this is basically asking you if you want to put your project into your workspace or you want to only use your workspace to save your layout settings and have your project stored elsewhere. We will leave this option checked. In the JRE section, you can choose which Java runtime environment to use. It is possible to have multiple Java runtime versions on one machine. And here you can choose which one you prefer to use for this project. Next, it's asking you about the project layout. Some people like to store their binary files and their source code files in the same location. Some individuals like to store them in separate folders. If you choose the later, you will be storing your source code and your binary Java files in two separate locations. If you choose the first option, then you are electing to store them together. There's also option to configure working sets. However, for us, this is not applicable, so we will skip this. Select the Next button or click Finish. And as you can see, you now have a brand new Java Orange HRM project. The source folder has been created for you already. And additionally, Eclipse has added all of its own JRE system libraries. These libraries are necessary for Eclipse to be able to function. They are also necessary for Eclipse to be able to compile and run your project. It is not a good idea to try to remove these as Eclipse will not like it. Now that we have our project, we need to add certain items to our project. Since we are going to be using Selenium to perform our automation testing, what we need to add to our Eclipse project is the Selenium server and Selenium client. Both of these JAR files can be downloaded from the seleniumhq.org website. Simply go to www.seleniumhq.org slash downloads and find the section which says Selenium Client and Selenium Server. 
The Selenium server, formerly known as Selenium RC server, actually contains Selenium RC and the web driver binary. To download, simply click on the link next to download version. At the time of this video, the current version is 2.31.0. Similarly, once you download the Selenium server, you will also need to download the Selenium client. Depending on which language you have elected for your Selenium project, you will download the corresponding client. For this demo, we are using Java, so we will be downloading the Java client. Again, to start the download, all you have to do is click on the download link. Once you have downloaded both of the files, you will have one jar file and one zip file. Return back to the Eclipse Orange HRM Java project and create a new folder to store all of your external libraries. To create a new folder, select the project name, select File, New, and select Folder. Give folder a name such as Lib and click Finish. As you can see, a new folder has been created. Now all you need to do is drag the server jar file into the lib folder, as you will see now. When your mouse pointer has a box with a plus sign next to it, you can release the mouse button and your file will be deposited into the lib folder. Select Copy Files and OK. Now, for the client, you will have to unzip the client zip folder. Once the folder has been unzipped, Inside, you will find a subfolder, and inside that subfolder, you will find two jar files. Grab the jar that doesn't have the SRCS appended to it and drag it right into the lib. Again, once the pointer has a box with a plus sign next to it, you can drop the file and it will land in the lib folder. And again, choose Copy Files and OK. As you can see, there are now two jar files inside my lib folder. Now before Eclipse is able to recognize these jar files for what they are, it needs to know how to find them. Since Eclipse does not automatically assume that the folder we're going to be storing our jar files in is called lib, we need to tell Eclipse that this is where they are actually going to be located. To do this, simply highlight both of the files. You can use the shift key and select the first file and then the down key to select the next file, as I just did right now. Or you click on the first file, hold down the control key and click on the second file. After both of the jar files are highlighted, right click with your mouse and select build path, add to build path. You will immediately notice that there is a little jar icon that appears on the bottom left corner of each of the selenium jar icons and a reference libraries node is going to be added to the package explorer under which your jar files are going to be displayed as little jars with 010 as in binary as a label. This will show you that Eclipse was successfully able to locate your jar files. As an extra precaution, it is a good idea to unfold each one of the jars to make sure that the jar files did not get corrupted during downloading. As you can see, I was able to unfold both of my jars. This means that they are not corrupted. If you do try to unfold one of your jars and you do not see any sub packages displayed by Eclipse, that means the jar has been corrupted during download and you will need to re-download the jar and recopy it into the lib folder. Now that we have our Eclipse project set up, we have just one last thing to add, and that is the JUnit jar. To download the latest version of JUnit, go to sourceforge.net slash projects slash JUnit slash files slash JUnit and simply select from the list. Usually the top link is also the latest version. At the time of the filming of this video, 4.10 is the latest version of JUnit. You can click on this and then select from any of the options to download JUnit. Most of the time, it's just more convenient to download the jar file itself. Go ahead, click on the jar file, and the download will start. Once the jar file has been downloaded, it will look something like this. So again, simply click on it and drag it to lib folder. Once there is a box with a plus sign next to the mouse pointer, release, and the jar will be added to the lib folder. You will need to add it to your build path by selecting the jar file, 
right clicking on the jar file and selecting build path, add build path from the context menu in Eclipse. Unfold it, make sure that packages are present inside. Now you are ready to export your existing test cases and add them into the source folder. Open Selenium IDE and any of your previously recorded Selenium IDE test cases. It is always a good idea to play the test case once to make sure that it is valid and has no errors. As you can see, this test case passes without any problems. In order to export this test case to Java JUnit, we select File, Export Test Case As, and choose from one of the listed options. If we are using Java, we actually have five options to choose from. For the purpose of this video, we will be using Java JUnit 4 WebDriver. Once the Save As dialog opens, simply choose your workspace and give your new file a name. Our workspace is located on C drive. Select your project and the source folder and now give your file a name. It is important to remember to give your file a .java file extension and then save. You can now close Selenium IDE and go back to Eclipse IDE. At first, you might be a little surprised to find that there is nothing inside the source folder. This is because Eclipse is not aware that new files have been added to the source folder. In order to make sure Eclipse is aware of this fact, go ahead and refresh the entire project. To refresh, select the project name, right click, and select Refresh. Alternatively, you can click the F5 key to refresh the project. And now, as you can see, there is something inside our source folder, in this case valid login test case, is inside our source folder. You can open the Java file by double clicking on it and as you can see what started out as Selenium ID context has now been magically transformed into Java web driver syntax. You will also see that Eclipse is complaining about a certain error inside your project. You can also see this in the problems tab on the bottom of Eclipse. If you click on the error, you will be able to read what the problem is. And in this case, it's saying that the declared package name does not match the actual location of the file. And of course, this is correct because we have package com.example.test declared at the top of our script, but instead we have placed our source file into the default package. To resolve this issue, simply delete the package declaration and save. And as you can see, there are no more errors. You are now ready to play your test and see it run in the browser. To play your test, right click anywhere inside your source Java file. And from the context menu, select run as JUnit test. In just a few seconds, you should be able to see a browser open and your test will be executing. As you can see, the test has finished executing. There are no errors. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please click like on the bottom of the screen. If you have any questions that you would like to ask about Selenium or WebDriver, please leave a comment below.